The way Enshrouded makes me feel is something I haven't felt in a long time. That's due in no small part to the fact that I'm no longer a young man and am in fact an older, jaded gamer with decades worth of experience that encompasses both euphoria and disappointment. Pinning down what exactly makes this game feel special is not easy, but I do know it's an intersection of art style, world design, and RPG elements. Starting off with the art style, Enshrouded just looks nice. It's easy on the eyes, and manages to decently split the difference between stylized and realistic. What I mean by that is how the overall way the characters, enemies, and objects are modeled are closer on being something realistic. Meanwhile, the way that things are textured or colored is much more clean, and done in such a way that comes off in a slightly cartoonish fashion put both of these things inside of a quality lighting system, and you get something that really manages to pop. It creates bright and beautiful landscapes, but also dour and repressive grottos when you start to investigate the game's dark corners. I have never advocated for buying a game solely based on how it looks, but managing to hit this unique balance is worth mention, and an absolute bonus. Having a great coat of paint and art direction is more or less candy coating on the more substantive things that make this game stand out to me, starting with world design. Like so many games these days, Enshrouded has an open world for you to explore. What helps to set it apart, though, is how the world is also handcrafted. Instead of a randomly generated landscape, every small detail from ruins to caves to enemy encampments are all set and don't change. To add to this, the game's larger story and world building are done through old journals and notes scattered throughout the world, a form of storytelling that I particularly enjoy. This is all standard fare in plenty of games and not really that uncommon, but Enshrouded is a survival crafting game. Those th two things don't usually go together, as the survival crafting genre is mostly saturated with titles that randomly generate the world when you start a new game. The use of a set landscape, though, means that the simple activity of exploration is significantly more satisfying. Yes, the world is large and open, but there are limits to where you can go before you get stronger and either unlock new abilities or beat specific bosses. This means that, as your horizons broaden, you get drip-fed new bits of story through journals and scraps of paper left behind. The way that the world gets unlocked to you also means that, as you explore within the confines of what you're strong enough to tackle, you discover the small dungeons and encampments you were meant to find. The way the exploration is loosely tailored resonates with me. There's no shortage of places to explore or clean out for loot, like weapons, armor, or accessories. Yet, even though every abandoned inn I come across on the road looks much the same, it still feels different. There's something about walking into a left-behind and ruined world, seeing the people who met their end, and sometimes getting a glimmer of what happened to one person who took the time to put ink to paper. Then, when your adventures take you to far-aflung locations and the landscape and biomes change, that's magical in an entirely new way. Again, I don't really understand why it has this feeling, but the manner in which this world is crafted, it just feels like I am truly discovering things left behind by people instead of a lot of separately built structures that an algorithm placed randomly. You can feel that the world is handmade, especially when you reach the top of the towers that let you survey the landscape, looking out taking in the vistas, seeing the beauty of everything out there, and most importantly, being able to spot things on the horizon and know you can reach it. That is a magical feeling. Looking out and knowing where you can go next, that is exploration at its finest. Having a half dozen smaller places along the way for you to explore when trying to reach that destination only improves the experience. And like I already said, even though many locations are similar because they're built out of the same pieces, they still feel distinct. So 
all of those extra places you stumble across when journeying manage to pull you in, because they're just different enough to remind you. This unexplored location that was not your destination may have something you haven't found yet. This is an incredibly difficult balancing act to achieve, but when it happens, it also feeds into the next part of what makes this game special, the RPG mechanics. Even though it is entirely accurate to call Enshrouded a crafting survival building game, and there is absolutely nothing stopping you from really leaning into the base building mechanics, it's also an RPG. It's not just any RPG either, it's the type of role-playing game with a web of choices and character builds to choose from. In addition to this, you do not level up fast in Enshrouded, roughly one level every two hours by my experience. Yet, despite that slow pace of progression, the number of skill points you get every time you do level up, and the spread out cost of how you spend those points, helps to offset the slower speed of progression. A contributing factor to this is the aforementioned exploration. As you journey to your next destination or quest for your next objective, you're constantly finding those less notable places across the map. Every time you find these locations, you'll get a bit of experience for any combat you do, but more importantly is the looting. Even though Enshrouded isn't a loot greed RPG like Diablo or Borderlands, the familiar system of randomized and colored loot is still in the game. There are chests of different rarity inside of many of the villages, ruins, and dungeons you stumble across, each potentially holding better weapons, accessories, and crafting supplies. There's also an inspired way to deal with the junk loot that you find and don't have a use for, at least the weaponry anyway. Unlike in looter RPGs, Enshrouded doesn't have vendors for you to barter with, which honestly makes sense as the setting is post-apocalyptic. Thus, you can't sell your vendor trash, so instead, you salvage it to get runes, which you, in turn, use in the crafting system to enhance the equipment you do use. Add to this the fact that different types of equipment are useful for different types of builds, and you get a system that encourages multiple playthroughs. If you don't want to restart, though, you can always spend some of those runes at the flame altar in your base to entirely respec your character. Which brings us to the last part of the game we need to talk about, the survival crafting aspect. Like I already said, Enshrouded is indeed a survival crafting game, and depending on your playstyle, you can lean as heavily on that aspect of gameplay as you want. It is possible, however, to avoid it to a significant degree. You see, the game's namesake refers to a type of fog called Shroud that covers the map, and you can only venture into it for a short period of time. To extend the duration of how long you can be enshrouded, you have to place and then upgrade a flame altar, which is the object that determines the boundaries for building a base. It's here you can construct storage, summon NPCs who unlock both crafting recipes and give you quests, and also get a rested bonus based on how nicely you decorate the place. There's a decent amount of depth to what you can do with your base, but if you're not into base building, you can get away with just hastily erecting a shack and both filling and surrounding it with chests and crafting stations. However, there's a decent incentive to spending some real time on making the place at least look more livable. As already stated, your home will give you a rested bonus, and the more fancy, comfort-enhancing objects you place, the longer your rested bonus will last. This bonus is particularly important because it increases your overall stamina and the speed at which it recovers, which can be critical for much of your exploration, and having it last longer is invaluable during your longer outings to the farther reaches of the world. Oh, right, did I mention that the map in this game is huge, and it is only half implemented so far. Anyway, it's still possible to get yourself a nice rested bonus without too much work, so going all in on making yet another dream home isn't necessary for anyone who just really revels in exploring the map and checking out the world's unlit grottos. That being said, you do need to get into crafting for your clothing and armor. 
Unlike with weapons and accessories, which are almost exclusively dropped by enemies or found in loot chests, you almost exclusively have to craft whatever you wear. Another boon to the game's design, however, is that you don't have to rigorously engage in an entirely different style of gameplay to make these items. With most crafting games, if you want to make metal armor, you have to spend hours mining through the earth to find the ore to smelt first. Enshrouded eventually brushes with this idea, but it surprisingly doesn't start there. Most of the basic textiles and metals you need in the early game are actually scavenged from the places you come across while exploring. You just have to be diligent about looting piles of junk and breaking barrels open to find it all. If you're really dedicated, though, you can also use a pickaxe to break down things like cages and metal baskets for extra material to drag back to base. The traditional mining and gathering aspect is still there, but it takes a long time before you have to really start engaging with it. Even then, there's so little of it that most of the mining you'll do is for the building of structures and home furnishings. If you want to build your house out of wood, you'll do lots of chopping, or swinging your pick if you want to build with stone, flint, or clay. Beyond that, though, resource gathering, for the most part, is directly tied to exploring and looting. Thus, you'll get the best results by going into one of the many mines you come across and picking the easy resources out of the walls there. And, due to the game's respawn mechanics, you can repeatedly mine specific locations for all of the raw supplies you need. It's apt to say you're not really required to do much of any resource gathering the typical way you would expect to in a survival crafting game, which is refreshing. Enshrouded sets this rule up for itself and then follows it so well that you don't even need to farm the food you eat. That at least at the start, and with a small enough party. You can play with up to 16 people at once, and as the numbers go up, resource management and supplies naturally become more of a bear to manage. On the note of food, while you can eat and drink, it's not necessary to survive. Which is another differing factor from most survival crafting games. It's treated the same as you would expect to see in an MMO so everything you consume somehow gives you a buff, like more health or additional damage. Overall, despite the fact that you can indeed homestead, it's nice to see a crafting survival game that doesn't force you to go all in on it, instead allowing you the option to grab what you need from what's already lying around in the world. This is possible because many of the spoils respawn roughly every 30 minutes on a server, or every time you reload a single-player world. The way the developers have chosen to implement crafting survival here is just different enough to be quite satisfying. Okay, so I know that was supposed to be the last thing I needed to talk about, but I really need to bring up something else just for my sake. The music in Enshrouded is amazing. This is a much harder thing to really make a point about because musical tastes are so extremely subjective, but I can't stress how much I love this game's soundtrack. You've been listening to it throughout this entire video, and if you feel anything like I do about this stuff, it stood out to you. The times when I open a new game and I keep raving about how much I love the music are not often. But this is absolutely one of those times. In fact, the day I woke up to see that they added the soundtrack as DLC for the game, I couldn't buy it fast enough. And yes, I do know that I'm an old man for wanting to own and download music instead of just stream it all, but I love having an uninterrupted listening experience. I mean, I had an MRI done recently and they put headphones on you since you have to lie still in a really loud machine for like an hour, except half of everything I heard we're insurance commercials. Fuck you and your ad spot. If it's not obvious at this point, I absolutely think that Enshrouded is a fantastic game that's at least worth giving a shot to. There's a lot to chew on, and what's currently available isn't even that much of a grind because of how focused on exploration it is. I know that I've found the game to be worth both my time and money, so it gets my seal of approval. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and listening. If you want more videos like this, then tell YouTube by hitting the like button and maybe even commenting. 
My work here is also made possible by monthly viewer support at strife.solutions, and I want to thank each and every one of my supporters for every dollar I get. Also, on a more real note, I've been absent for a while, only uploading intermittently for a long stretch now. I'm hoping to actually turn that around this year, so fingers crossed you'll see more of me going forward. Until next time, though, I'm William Strife, and I'll see you later.